Last class period, we looked at notes and we said, well, if we have a triangle, we create a triangle on the x and y axis for some angle theta. Then this was x, this was y. That's the coordinate point, x comma y. And the hypotenuse is r. And the reason why we label it as r, because that kind of represents some radius of a circle. Right? And so we went through our six trigonometric functions. You know, for instance, the sine of theta was now y over r. But the important thing is, let's go back and think about our favorite triangle. Our favorite special right triangle had a hypotenuse of 1. Right? So if we kind of go back through this relationship here on the x and y axis, forget about what the angle is, or forget about it being 45 degrees or anything. What's nice about this is if you have this x and y coordinate, right? Here's your coordinate point. When you're doing, if you know r is equal to 1, do we really need to say sine of theta is y over 1? Can we just now say the sine is equal to y? Yeah. Right? Doesn't that make sense? Like the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, why put it over 1? So the difference here is there's nothing wrong. This is what we learned last class period. There's nothing wrong with this definition. But this definition is important when you have r of some value other than 1. But if we can think about something when r is 1, or the hypotenuse or the radius is 1, our trigonometric functions can be simplified. Right? Because still, sine, and again, what this is really bringing us to, guys, is three different definitions of sine. We first talked about the definition of sine being the relationship or the ratio comparison of the opposite side of a triangle over the hypotenuse. Right? That was definition number one. Then, last class period, we looked at the relationship of a triangle in a coordinate grid. And we said, well, that's still, this, that's still true, but if we think about it on a coordinate system, we can now say sine is the y, which is the opposite, over r, which is the hypotenuse. And now we're just going a step further. We're now saying, well, guess what? Well, what if we just made the radius or the hypotenuse 1? Now we can define sine as just y. And that's where our rest of our functions come from. Cosine can just be x. Tangent is just like actually it was over here. That's just going to be the y over x. So this allows us to simplify our points, right? Um, but this comes with some danger, OK? Some danger in here. And that's what I want to explain to you before, because I don't want you to get this confused with what we learned last class period. Questions? Yes. 